Hey, thank you all. It is great, great to be here. I'm going to take you guys on what I call a, like a little love journey. And you may think it's kind of foolish at first, but I actually am going somewhere with this. So I fell in love when I was 17 years old to Chick-fil-A. Does anybody like Chick-fil-A? Oh, yeah. Come on. So uh, I've done some date nights for Chick-fil-A called The Great Date Night, and I wanted to write a song to honor Chick-fil-A because I used to work at Chick-fil-A, and I still eat at Chick-fil-A. So I wanted to write it, but I wanted to do it from the cow's perspective because, you know, we never really think about that. So this is what kind of came out. Hope you all enjoy it. Here we go. There was a time when I couldn't ask of you To help me out, you know it's true You love your steaks and your fillets And those beefy ribs with barbecue But I got a plan, I need your help The time is now, please understand I'm just a cow, I ain't proud I got to save my life somehow You gotta eat more chicken so my heart can keep a ticking I'm staying alive, staying alive You gotta eat more chicken so my heart can keep a ticking I'm staying alive, staying alive Sing, oh! Stay alive, sing up. Stay alive. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for participating on that. So so anyway, I graduated from high school, which was a great a great thing, and then I got into the University of Southwestern Louisiana. Does anybody know where that is? Lafayette, Louisiana. And uh, they used to call it the University of Slow Learners, and I'm not kidding. It was a big, uh, a big party school. I didn't know the Lord at the time, but I wanted to learn about music. So when you want to learn about music in college, typically they make you learn how to sing properly, and that's opera music. So um, I truly fell in love with opera music after about a year. The problem is, is that when you study opera, you have to learn the languages, like German, French, and I was a horrible student, but I knew how to make the sound. So on my next little love journey, I'm going to give you a little opera just to kind of give you a, a feel of what it would be like, but I am going to make up the words. It's going to sound like a foreign language, but so just go with me on that. Are you ready? Marino <laughs> sola Marino sola di palena, marano no sola mon, o mi sele, mari sele, picarol, picarol. Okay, enough of the foolishness. So, um, after I did that for about two and a half, three years, I thought, man, I don't know if I could do this for the rest of my life since I didn't know what I was singing. So um, I moved to, I was in Lafayette, Louisiana. I was in the drug scene. I didn't know the Lord. And so I moved out of that world to Miami, Florida. I know what you guys are thinking. Not a really smart move, if you know anything about Miami. And, uh, and it was not a good move for me. But it was there where I fell in love with Jesus Christ. And uh, God just really got a hold of my heart. But I used to play in piano bars. Um, that was kind of like my occupation. And I thought, man, I, you know, they were telling me I can't do that anymore. And then I don't know if y'all ever done this. Have y'all ever gone back and listened to some of the songs maybe that you used to listen to? Maybe you still listen to them. I don't know. Um, but I thought, man, it would be cool to take some of the songs that I used to do in the bars and redeem them and do them like a, a Christian would do them. And, and so this is what came out. Sing us a song. You're the piano man Sing us a song tonight For we're all in the mood For a melody And we know you'll sing about Christ Hallelujah Hallelujah Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. For we're all in the mood for a melody. And we know you'll sing about 
Christ, I want to stop and thank you, Jesus. I just want to stop and thank you, Jesus. Come on. How sweet it is to be loved by you. Oh, yeah. How sweet it is to be loved by you. How sweet it is to be loved by you. It doesn't Understand what I'm saying? <laughs> if you call on Jesus as your Savior, then I'm your brother, you got hope. I said I'm taking it to the street, taking it to the street, and taking it to the street, taking it to the street, and taking it to the street. Almost at the end of my love journey, um, so my wife would be the final one that came right after Jesus Christ. I actually met her in a singing group. We traveled around the country telling people about Jesus, and uh, quite honestly, I was single when I was in the group. I didn't want a girlfriend, and uh, one day, my wife, well, she wasn't my wife at the time, but she was walking across the parking lot, and I was just, I was just admiring God's creation and her, and uh I don't know if I was lusting or not, y'all, but it was, uh, my eyes were opened for the very first time, and uh, I thought, Lord, you really did a good job on her, and I, and so we've been married for, that's what this ring signifies, 26 years, and yeah, so four, four kids later, um, we've been through an awful lot, and uh, actually, when we had our fourth child, um, Heidi uh, was I was with Nusa on the group. I was traveling around the country telling people about Jesus and singing for them, but also uh, kind of doing the altar calls. And, and Heidi uh, was trying to raise four kids on her own at home. I was gone about 250 days out of a year, which if you think about that, it's just mind-blowing. All in the name of God, doing God's work, thinking this is it. This is my calling. I've, I found my calling. This is my true calling. You know, people are getting saved on a, on a weekly basis, thousands and thousands of kids and you begin to believe that it's you, and you don't realize truly that the Spirit of God is the only thing that convict, can convict a heart, and it's not really about you at all. He'll use you, but I was doing what I thought to be God's work, and it really was. I don't think it was the best thing for our marriage, and uh, so we almost divorced in 2001 because of, I mean, she was diagnosed with bipolar. 
I should have been diagnosed with selfishness. Um, I remember her being checked into a mental hospital and uh, the do- for a couple of days of evaluation, and the doctor looked at my, my wife, didn't know our story at all, and she said, um, Mrs. O'Brien, it is easier to check yourself into a mental hospital than it is to be angry at your husband. And there was a lot of wisdom in that. She came back home, kind of told me that. I kind of laughed it off, said, babe, just go get happy. You happy, me happy. And the bottom line is she started getting better because all this stuff started coming out, and I started getting bitter because I thought, hey, how could you be mad at me, Mr. Perfect Husband? And um, I realized there's only one perfect person, and that's Christ. And so he convicted my heart, and after a couple of years, I started writing, after God began to heal our marriage, um, I started writing some love songs. And that's significant, y'all, because I'd written a lot of love songs to Heidi, and she didn't like any of them because they were songs that said, hey, I'll stick with you no matter how ugly it gets kind of songs. And, and women, for the most part, they want to be romanticized, you know, romance and, and just kind of this thing about the nostalgic Nat King Cole songs, just sappy love. And, and so I began to write a song out of that, out of the overflow of my heart. And uh, all I can tell you is I scored a lot of points that day and I ended up doing a whole project for her. But this is the, the song that actually started the whole project, Something About Us. I've been dreaming about your face Get lost and obsessed in your embrace Just one more kiss for me would be a tragedy if you stop there It wouldn't be fair I'm crying now for one more touch But I confess it won't be enough Don't want a somebody cool Cause I'm fanatical when it comes to you Baby, it's true Without you, only love My one and only love I've written songs throughout the years To tell you, darling, how I feel So let me your ear Tell me, dear, am I making it clear? Every day I fall in love again. That's why we'll never, no, never be just friends. One look, I was hypnotized, now I'm mesmerized at the thought of you. Baby, it's true. My one and only I 
heard that his kingdom had come to mothers and daughters and fathers and sons and to those who would follow his voice he changed every heart it's not just on pages of history it's not simply chiseled in stone it's kept in the depth of the soul and the story goes on it burns like a flame through the years and the tears and the trials the story goes on and we carry his name and it goes across all the miles we enter this life with a whimper and cry sometimes we falter sometimes we fly but the ultimate truth never will die and forever the story goes on the story goes on to some he was more than the breath they wouldn't deny him in pain or in death his name always stayed on their lips and has passed down to mine so I'm following all those before me and even long after I'm gone the message of Christ will be heard and the story goes on it burns like a flame through the years and the tears and the trials the story goes across all the miles we enter this life with a whimper and cry sometimes we falter sometimes we fly but the ultimate truth never will die and forever the story goes on the story goes on There's hope for the future, there's hope for the lost, there's always a soldier to carry the cross, and the story is true, and the story is changing the world, and the story goes on, and it burns like a flame through the years and the tears and the trials, the story goes on. across all the miles we enter this life with a whimper and cry sometimes we falter sometimes we fly but there's an ultimate truth and it never will die and forever the story goes on the story goes on To me, the thing I love about the story of Christ is that it, it's the truth, and the truth lives on forever and ever. And our story, everybody has a story, and praying that everybody has Jesus in their story, because without him, we have, we have no hope whatsoever. Um, Fanny Crosby, I don't know if anybody ever heard of Fanny? She's a great, well, she's passed away, but um, I was telling somebody earlier that I write with dead people for some reason. I guess because when I rewrite their music, they don't really have any say in, in the matter, so... Maybe when I get to heaven. I don't know. Um, but this song uh, Fanny Crosby wrote called Blessed Assurance, um, most people don't know this about her. Some people do, that she was actually blind her entire life. And somebody asked her about her blindness, and what she said really just, uh, it really ministered to my heart. Um, basically, it was what she said. She said, it seemed intended by the blessed providence of God that I should be blind all my life. 
and I thank him for the dispensation. If perfect, perfect earthly sight were offered me tomorrow, I would not accept it. I might not have sung hymns to the praise of God if I had been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. It's the final saying. If I had a choice, I would still choose to remain blind, for when I die, the first face I will ever see will be the face of my blessed Savior. I just thought that was so beautiful. And then when you, when you read the lyrics of the Blessed Assurance, when it comes to that line where it says, uh, um, I think it's uh, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. You think about the sight that she had was so different than our sight, obviously. And she had such a, I travel with a young lady that's blind as well and do some of her conferences by the name of Jennifer Rothschild and just a beautiful soul. So I'm going to teach you a little bit of this song, just the chorus, and we can sing it together. We're like in a living room, y'all, so y'all should feel good about that. So uh, the chorus is what we'll sing together, and then I'll sing the verses, and every time we come to that chorus, we'll sing it together. But this is the chorus. This is my story. Oh, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior more all the day long. Let's sing that together, right? This is my story Oh, this is my song I'm praising my Savior more All the day long Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Glory divine, heir of salvation, I'm purchased of God, I'm born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. Here we go. And this is my story. Oh, this is my song. Praising my Savior more all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture that burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Sing this part with me. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Salvation purchased of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Oh, this in my story. Oh, this is my song. Oh, praising my Savior, praising my Savior all the day long. So uh, every once in a while I get to travel into some prisons and visit the guys, and um, I was in a ministry with Chuck Colson called uh, Starting Line, and we were in this prison in Florida, which is where I got in most of my trouble, y'all, and I was, I was in there, um, we, we did like a concert in the yard with all the other inmates who are just kind of in there, you know, you're just praying, everybody's having a good day, right, and we finished that concert, and we were on our way out, and the guy said, hey, do you mind going to solitary confinement, these guys are, they're, 
they're in there the whole time, 24-7. And we're like, sure. So we went in there, shared a little bit. And then on our way out, the guy who was working solitary confinement said, hey, are you Michael O'Brien, the Christian artist? And I was like, uh, yeah. And he goes, well, there's a guy in cell number, and he's pointing upstairs. And he said, he wants to talk to you. And I thought to myself, oh, my word. How in the world does anybody know who I am in here? Do I have a friend in here? You know, I was just kind of going through my brain. So I, I walk up to this room, and there's this guy standing there, and he says, hey, are you Michael O'Brien, the Christian artist? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, one second. He goes back, grabs a piece of paper, comes back, and at the very top of this is a, one of my songs. It was calligraphied. It said, if ever I forget. And I was just like, what in the world? He goes, well, I listen to the radio. He says, and I was kind of going through the stations, and your song was playing. He said, it, it ministered to me so much that I just left it on there, and every time that song would come on, I would just write those words down. He says, man, I just... You have no idea how that's ministered to me behind these bars. And right then, God just told me to sing the chorus right through the window, and I began to sing the chorus, and his, his eyes puddled up. And, but this is why I'm sharing the story, because I never want to forget why I get to do what I get to do, and I really believe it's a, a privilege and an honor to be able to share the gospel through music. And you never know how God is going to use a, when you speak to somebody or if you've written something down that somebody reads, you never know what God's going to use it for his glory. And so this is a little bit of that song. You know, sometimes it's hard to be the man you see in me. It's the struggle of this heart torn between what I should do between the lies and the truth How could I fall So far away From a love That takes me as I am And offers a forgiveness That I can never understand So if ever I forget one to nail my shame to a tree To my place where no one else believed You were there for me If ever I forget The one who gave his heart He gave me a second chance Oh, thank you, Jesus one who holds my future in his hands Where will I be? Oh, oh Savior, Savior of my life Never let me lose sight Of you I said if ever I forget oh, One who gave his heart Second chance. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The one who holds my future in his hands. Oh, whoever it be. If ever I forget. Thanks. All right, so I'm going to do, um, there's a guy who wrote Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Anybody ever heard that song? It's the number two most recorded song in the history of the world. And uh, he was, a, actually, he was a friend of mine. I know that sounds crazy. He's passed away now, but he was in California. And uh, anyway, he rewrote the song, and we were working on a Christmas Shoes album, and they were going to put it on there, but they decided to do the original. So when I did my Christmas album three years ago, I recorded this song, and it's, I think I'm the one of two people that's ever recorded this song. So um, anyway, I love it because this has the gospel in it. So here we go. Have yourself a blessed little Christmas. Christ the King is born. 
Let your voices ring upon this happy morn. Oh. Have yourself a blessed little Christmas. Serenade the earth. Tell the world we celebrate our Savior's birth. Let us gather and sing to him and bring to him our praise. Christ the Lord is a gift for all to the end of all our days. Sing hosannas, hymns, and hallelujahs. As for me, we bow. Make the music mighty as a hymn. Now Since by faith I saw the stream, thy flowing wounds supply, redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die. There is a fire. 
fountain to cleanse our guilt and shame. There is a fountain, a fountain to wash our sins away. When this poor listening, stammering tongue lies silent in the grave, then in a nobler, sweeter sound I'll sing thy power to save. I'll sing thy power to save. precious blood of the lamb that cleanses us from our iniquities. I can't even imagine uh, my life without Christ and the amazing sacrifice he made for us that we're able to, to freely worship him and be here and uh, to lift him up. My daughter hasn't always known that truth. As a matter of fact, I think she'd be okay with me saying this. She was, she was very much like I was and just, you know, she's raised up in a godly family, but at the age of 18 wanted her own life. And so for two years, she she went and lived the life she wanted to live, and she literally came back with nothing and uh, out of desperation. And the beautiful thing about God is that he's a redeemer, and uh, her life has made a, a, a 180 uh, and just a, an amazing turn. And um, she's at Liberty University and almost a senior and wants to sing for the Lord and wants to find a godly husband, which hard to find these days, and at least the ones that I approve of. Um, but on my project, this, uh, this project I did called, their, um, it's, oh my gosh, it's Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs, but uh, she sang with me uh, a duet, and though she is not here, everywhere I go, um, I have her on this, uh, this particular track, so it makes me think about her and where God has taken her. And, but th this is a beautiful song that, once again, Fanny Crosby penned, and uh, I rewrote, and, uh, but it's called Safe in the Arms of Jesus. Safe in the arms of Jesus, hope for the comfortless. There by his love or shaded, sweetly my soul shall rest. Hark, tis the voice of angels, born in a song to me. Over the fields of glory, over the jasper sea. arms of Jesus where I'm free from care safe from the world's temptations sin cannot harm me there free from the blight of sorrow free from my doubts and fears only a few more trials only a few more tears Safe, safe, safe in the arms of Jesus. Safe, I'm safe. Safe, safe, safe in the arms of Jesus. I'm safe. my refuge blood he has shed for me firm on the rock of ages ever my trust shall be here let me wait with patience wait till the night is o'er wait till I see the morning 
break on the golden shore. Say, 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 in the arms of Jesus. Say. Yeah, that's my girl, So, um, and that's my Savior. So uh, let me just say this before um, i got a couple, I guess I have a little bit more time, but um, I've lost some friends just recently, last week. Um, a friend of mine I used to play golf with uh, passed away with cancer, and uh, a couple of years before that I had a, a really dear close friend of mine, and he, um, he has 11 kids. Uh, seven of them are adopted from different countries, uh, mostly from Africa, but also from China. And he had four biological kids, and his name was Mike Kelly. And Mike was uh, just one of those guys who you love to hang around with because he loved Jesus, and he, he was bold in his faith and was raising these orphans. And Mike got sick, got cancer, and, of course, everybody prayed um, that God would heal him. We figured there's no way God won't heal him because look what he's done with his life. And and, and sure enough, um, the Lord took Mike home, and we all were scratching our head trying to figure out what was going on. But I think it, where I really come to a place in my life is that I trust God. I trust God no matter what. And and that's kind of where we all need to be when those kinds of things happen. Um, and so I was walking around in the uh, the church I go to has a little graveyard wrapped around half of it, and I was going and looking at all these tombstones. And I came across this one where this man by the name of William H. Webb had lost seven kids and his wife, and all in a three-week period. This is back in the 1800s to the typhoid fever. And on this monument, it goes up about six feet, and there's this thing that William H. Webb put right in the front of that, and this is what it said. It said, Dark and mysterious are thy ways, O thou King of saints. In righteousness and truth all thy works are wrought, and to thy will should feeble and short-sighted man bow in submission and own thee as the supreme sovereign of all thy creatures. Though thy ways are deep and dark, there is pleasure in the thought that they are all laid in wisdom and mercy and are heaven's channels to convey the richest good to mortals. Uh, we don't talk like that anymore. And I can tell you right now, when we're in the valleys, and Brother William H. Webb was in a valley, it's truly where we, that's where we find our hope, and it's in Christ. We love the mountaintops, but he had a depth of Christ that I can't even comprehend. But this one's called When Life Gets Broken. Hands reaching out, no one to hold. You've been abandoned with no place to go. Wounded and wanting. Such desperate times, cold, bitter tears are filling your eyes. Get a glimpse of Jesus, for he is right there with you. He knows just what you need. 
Cause when life gets broken and you're in despair, you'll carry your burden when it's too much to bear. It's down in the valley where he'll give you strength. There is nothing you have lost he can fill with his grace. He'll help you start all over again. Oh, when life gets broken. You hope God would heal him, but he went home anyway. Now it's hard to imagine how you make it through the day. Oh, weeks turn to years, time's passing you by, but you're still holding on to the hows and the why. Oh, get a glimpse of Jesus, for he is right there with you. He knows just what you need. When life gets broken and you're in despair, you carry your burden when it's too much to bear. Down in the valley, we're here, give you strength. And there is nothing you have lost, He can fill with His grace. He'll help you start all over again. Oh, He'll help you start all over again. Oh, when life gets broken. Yeah. So um, thank you for coming, taking time out of your day to, to be with me here. Thank you for this network. I love what y'all are doing here and, and so thankful that the Word of God is going out on a daily, minute-by-minute -minute basis. And uh, I just pray for all of us, um, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven and that we would live our lives in such a way that we would bring glory to Christ, whatever we do. Um, whether we go to a grocery store and get some food and just love on somebody on the way out, that goes a long, long way. And uh, I also pray um, that we would realize when Jesus taught us how to pray the Lord's Prayer, um, that was something that it's not just to do for memory, but to really apply those things into our life. And as I sing this last song, I pray it'll wash over you in a fresh and new way. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thine is a key.
kingdom. 